Muslims always say you need to understand context behind verses and hadith. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to dig into a particular obscure and strange hadith about breastfeeding, but not breastfeeding children, breastfeeding adult men. Now, you might be thinking, what the heck? I don't know any Muslims that do that. Well, neither do I. This thing just doesn't happen. But it did happen. And it happened for a very good reason back in the 7th century. Why did the companions of Muhammad need to do this? What's the reason why Aisha decided to use this halal workaround in order to be alone with men. This particular ruling about breastfeeding men has even been mentioned by Al-Azhar and was even quoted by Muhammad Hijab on Twitter in one of his arguments. It's pretty funny when the rules of a religion are so strange and the workarounds are even more strange. You're going to love this. Let's get into it. This lady, Sahla, came to the Prophet and uh, said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I see signs of displeasure in this face of Abu Hudayfa when Salim entered upon me. So Abu Hudayfa is her husband and Salim is this child. The Prophet said, breastfeed him. And then the lady's like, how can I breastfeed him when he's a grown man? So when Muhammad said breastfeed him, the lady's first instinct is, like, what you mean like, what? And she's confused. The Messenger of Allah then smiled and said, I know that he's a grown man, like a very naughty, kinky smile. So she did that. <laughs> so she did that. Then she came to the prophet and said, I have never seen any signs of displeasure on the, after that. So, I mean, okay, so the guy apparently you feel is going to be horny towards you. So the way to fix it is make him suck your tit. <laughs> <laughs> but then even the second part doesn't make any sense like after that he suddenly his husband's not jealous anymore oh no she's not gonna cheat on me with uh, salim is it salim or salim yes <laughs> salim, right? he's not gonna cheat on me because he already sucked his breath what like <laughs> what's funny is aisha took this as a precedent for all men that she wanted to see that are not on mahram she can make them like this so there's a hadith where she started asking her other sisters who were lactating to call all the men to go breastfeed? <laughs> <laughs> breastfeed air <there> for <laughs> I'm I'm uh. Oh. Did they? But did they mean to express the milk like in a bottle or something? They don't mean literally like. Yes. Sucking. So that that's another controversy. Some scholars said that it was to put it in a cup and then give it to the kid. Okay. The like, adult, well, not that, kid. Yeah. Not kid. Yeah. yeah. Adult. Sorry, but yeah. like. What's the point? Would that does that change? It's like so complex for no reason. So then Albani, Sheikh Albani, uh, said no. It actually means literally sucking from the tip. And then there was this huge controversy on Twitter recently with our beloved uh, Muhammad Hijab, the guy with the most modest name. He has hijab in his name, you know, like and he's, <laughs> he's talking about. And then there was a huge controversy where people are saying, "Well, how can the Prophet say this? And why is Sheikh Albani saying?" grown men can suck on women's tits. And there was a fatwa, I remember, from I think Al-Azhar or something, where if a woman wants to work in a company where there's men around, she should breastfeed her co-workers or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, it, it, is, it is so weird. I never really got into this whole uh, breastfeeding issue in Islam. Although I looked about, I looked at so many things. I looked at so many embarrassing things, so many uh, nonsensical things within Islam. I feel like I kind of just uh, went around this whole breastfeeding thing because it sounded, it sounds so absurd to me. I still feel like, wait, this this can't be real. Like there, there must be, there must be some catch to it. There must be some weird, some something to this, right? I mean. I, I almost like to me this is almost like as obscure even though this is in like one of the main collections of hadith it almost feels like it's uh it's so obscure because nobody would ever do this in today's time at least i would think so uh, what do you think gondo like, i mean this, this is what muhammad tijab came out and said to some some other yeah. Muslim guy said uh okay can i suck your wife's tits yeah 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 <laughs> something to that effect right I, I mean i was just laughing when i saw that because he was um he was giving them the same treatment he, he used to give us like you know like those vulgar 
framings of like you know can i do this you know can you would you let your wife do this and that like he he's doing the same thing to the muslims and i was just like they're laughing and clapping i'm like there you guys go now you know what we had to deal with all this time right this is what we're dealing with. so there's this one hadith where it's really funny where aisha takes this one incident and then projects it as a common theme or practice that should be maintained so here um salama said to aisha a young boy who is at the threshold of puberty comes to you so Aisha was hanging out with this kid or a guy who was about almost mature. And then she says, I don't like that he should come to you. So then Aisha suddenly said, don't you see in Allah's messenger a model for you? And she also said the wife of Abu Hadaifa comes to me and he's a grown man. And there's something that rankles in the mind of that kid. Whereupon Allah's messenger said, suckle him. So Aisha used that incident from before as a projection to set this tradition of suckling any guy who wants to come see her to making him her mehram. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> what, what? I, I, yeah I don't understand why Muslim society doesn't just solve the problem of mahram by just making opening uh, places where women just breastfeed everybody <laughs> so, so, they, so they can get rid of the whole the, the barriers of, you know. And what's <laughs> one other thing I wanted to make sure about this controversy, we don't miss out, is these verses. There were verses revealed about breastfeeding adults that makes you oh. haram for marriage. There were first 10 sucklings that made a haram, then it was reduced to five, and then the verses don't exist in the Quran. But this is uh, numerously reported in almost all the earliest literature, even up to Imam Malik's Muwatta. He said that people were reciting the verses at times as well. And I mean, these are in Sahih Muslim as well. Um, if you want to just add my screen, I can. So yeah, so these are. Oh, sorry. Yeah, someone's saying these are obscure hadith, but no, they're not obscure hadith, right? I'll find some more of it. Right now, I just want to show you that this is yeah. in Sahih Muslim. I, I, I have to say, I do not think that it works like that. <laughs> I do. I do not think that by sucking on the tits of a woman, you will uh, stop having uh, sexual desires for her, and thereby. Uh, well, it makes it harm. I but have to show you this one. Yeah, yeah. But how does I don't I still don't understand how how like you're not allowed <laughs> to show your you're not allowed to be how what, how do you do this when you can't be alone with a woman and you can't she like that's her aura. I don't get it. It's weird, right? Like you, it's you, so don't, you, don't you don't understand the wisdom of Islam. <laughs> I don't understand how you implement this. That's what I'm confused about. Do you have to like blindfold them so they can't see what they're sucking? <laughs> okay, so this one is you have legit. to lower your gaze, eh? Like, okay, hold on, let me share your screen again. This one is legit a real life example that happened in Omar's time, and I was like, how did this? Like, how do people believe this? So, this is from Imam Malik's Muatta, one of the earliest hadith collections, one of the strongest ones and authentic ones per Muslim uh, corpus. Here it says that Yahya related me from Malik. A man came to Abdullah ibn Omar, where judgments were being given. And he asked about the suckling of an older person. Abdullah ibn Omar replied, A man came to Omar ibn al-Khattab and said, I have a slave girl and I used to have intercourse with her. My wife went to her and suckled her. <laughs> when I, oh, went, to, when I, I went, When I went to the girl, my wife told me to watch out because she had suckled her. So Omar told him to beat his wife and then go to his slave girl because kinship was only established by suckling of the young. Dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> you just contradicted the other hadith? I mean, just trying to make sense of this. This is, this is, this is such a mess, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's like a TV series. You can make an anime out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta yeah, be careful. Cool. I suckled that one. It's like... <laughs> this is, um, I mean, we, we highlighted this before, but just kind of, I'm just going to elaborate a little bit on this because it, it is actually quite comical. The wife of, um, was it Ibn Omar? Was jealous. Was it Ibn Omar's wife? Sorry, I'm trying no, to... Oh, it was a man. Some... A man came to Omar. Yeah. Okay, so basically it was, a, it was some random person that his wife was jealous that he was screwing his slave and she didn't like it so her, her fix was within the islamic framework to make that child her i sorry make that slave her daughter by suckling her right <laughs> and therefore now she's now that that slave is now like his daughter but th that means his his basically 
he's his daughter is a slave like it doesn't even make none of this makes any none sense of it right? makes. <laughs> it's so contradictory from every i angle. give i give props to that lady's creativity to think this whole thing <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen that like uh someone someone posted on ex muslim reddit the halal workaround to having a girlfriend boyfriend where you like you take your the, the lady as your slave and then you free her and then she becomes like your your wife or something there's like this big workaround you can do to have like premarital sex in islam without actually marrying the woman Dude. yeah yeah <laughs> because it, 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 will, it would technically not work within islamic within the islamic legal system because you're not technically allowed to uh out of nowhere enslave a free person oh yeah 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 true yeah, you need yeah, a war that's the, that's the problem right yeah, you, you have to go to war and then enslave the enemy well, and, well you have to find a slave market that's yeah, hello. yeah, and buy slaves yeah. that are already slaves. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is gonna the last thing I'm gonna share about the breastfeeding <laughs> thing. Then we'll move over from it. But this yeah. one's uh, hilarious. So this is again from uh, Imam Malik Smuwata. <laughs> I'll zoom in quickly for you guys. And here, what we're looking at is the same incident being narrated, but then Imam Malik has some commentary and some other women saying this. So, uh, she gave him a few drinks. Aisha. Um al Mu'minin took that as a precedent for whatever men she wanted to be able to come see her. So I'm not saying this. This is in the Islamic hadiths that Aisha was thinking that you can start breastfeeding any man you want to make your mahram. How does this work? I'm so <laughs> confused. So she ordered her sister to make a soup <laughs> and the daughters of her brother to give milk to whichever man she wanted to be able to come in to see her. I love I, I, I I seeing the confusion in Abdullah Samir's face. He's like genuinely struggling to understand. <laughs> I don't understand. No. I'm so lost. Like, how? What, what's going on? Like, so how, how other... does this fail with Islamic modesty and strict segregation and no pre middle set? Like, <laughs> I'm so lost. And like, I don't get it. Like, was this actually happening? Yeah, and then the other wives were literally mad and they're like, no way, that was just an exception for that one guy. So that also shows that that one guy was not a like a, into the cup feeding. He was a literal feeding. And Aisha took that as a precedent, sending random men to her sister to go suck my sister's titty. <laughs> but it says, it actually, like, the, like all the hadith is showing say suckling. It doesn't say express or if milk, drink. It says yeah. suckling. So, I don't exactly. know if the translation is bad, but that's clear what it means. I think we have to go to some Islamic scholars together and have to ask them to demonstrate to us <laughs> how this works. And, that's that's and, what Mama Hijab was, I think, trying to argue, right? Isn't it? Like exactly. Uh, like how right. you, can you please show us how this works? <laughs> well, he Wait. was saying he was he was so these. I think what happened was the Islamic scholar was a Muslim scholar was defending it, and he was like, "Okay, well." prove your point like you know <laughs> yeah okay can, okay can i suck your wife's tits to make her my mahram i think that's what he said to him Some, then, I, I don't know if he said can i or would you something like you know you should I, let her do that or something right i'm pretty sure he said can i i think i have oh. a screenshot here somewhere because i used it <laughs> uh, wait so so saying hey you, you want to suck my titties it's uh, like a sunnah <laughs> 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 oh my god i don't understand this i'm just like i'm so lost because as a muslim i like i never heard any of this <clears throat> i mean i read it but i didn't ponder oh. on it oh here here let me let me just let me, bring, okay. let me bring this up here uh share my screen <laughs> here oh my god <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, can I suck your wife's tit to make her mahram? I love how he capitalized it all. <laughs> <laughs> he took a page right out of Aisha's book. <laughs> okay, can I suck your wife's tit to make her mahram? So he's arguing against it basically. Like he thinks yeah, it's not yeah. allowed, right? Yeah, he, he says it's it's absurd. It should not be uh, what these Islamic what what, what scholars like uh, Albani teach. It is it, 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 it is absurd to him, and he's challenging them to uh, to think about the logic of that. But of course, their reaction is like, "What the hell is going on with you?" <laughs> so this this Omar Chatlia, I think, because he's a scholar. I mean, Muhammad Hijab was forced to apologize to him, right? Something yeah. like that. <laughs> well, they basically well, blame it on the men. <laughs> they basically compelled him to to apologize and to get off Twitter. He hasn't been on Twitter since after this incident. He apologized, left Twitter, 
that he he didn't come back after that. And he also said that he uh, he said I apologize. I am currently taking some heavy medication because I have back pain or something Tramadol. like that. And yes. this is and, the, and and that medication makes me say very strange things in public and private. Uh, and he blamed it on the med on the medicine, which is just so dumb. It's Thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out this other video on how breastfeeding makes you related in Islam. Please subscribe if you're new here. And thank you to my patrons for continuing to support the channel. Please join the Patreon if you'd like to support the cause. This is your friendly ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.